Point Nature Center, getting ready to do another very special My Favorite Animal program here. I want to remind everybody that unfortunately the Meg's Point Nature Center is closed. Connecticut State Parks remain open, although parts of them may be closed and some of the parks might have to be closed. And that's just to increase social distancing. I'm going to ask everybody out there, please keep social distancing. If you are socially distant, if you keep that spacing, then we won't have to close any parks. If people keep gathering up, they're going to start closing sections of parks. So that's where we are right now. Some of the parks are open. Some of them have limited access. So please abide by those guidelines um, and wash your hands, cough into your elbow, stay home if at all possible, all of these things to help us get through this. Okay. Um, what we're going to be doing today is a very special animal and it's a fish called a sheep's head minnow. So I'm going to turn the camera so that you can see the sheep's head minnow and you don't have to look at me, you can look at the fish that we're talking about. So this is a sheep's head minnow. These, all of these fish right here are sheep's head minnows. You can tell the males because they have the shiny metallic on the top of their head and they only get that through the breeding season which is April through September. So these fish are just beginning, coming into their breeding season. Uh, the, they will only breed for about 28 days. And during those 28 days, the females will lay about a thousand eggs. Okay. They lay them in small groups. They attach to all the eggs are attached by little threads and those eggs sink to the bottom. All right. And that's how the, they will continually lay those eggs over time. I don't know if you can see it, but there are some very tiny babies that were born or hatched here at the Nature Center last year. They're down here. So really special little fish there. Now, these fish are found from Cape Cod all the way down to the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico and then out into the West Indies. So we're almost the northern part of their range. They will get up to three inches long. That would be a really large one, three inches. You can see there's one back in the back. He looks like he's about an inch and a half, and that's more the typical uh, size that you're going to get the sheep's head minnows. Now, these fish are tolerant of lots of different, some different amounts of salt in water, which is salinity. So there's a good vocabulary word right there, salinity. They can be extremely high salinity and all the way into fresh water. So these fish are very tolerant of the differences within salinity. A really interesting thing, really amazing thing to me, in the winter, these fish hibernate. They will bury themselves down in the soft, mucky bottom and spend all winter there, okay? And then when it starts to get warmer, they'll come out and shortly after that, we're going to be getting them into their uh, breeding season. So again, that's May um, to September. Now, April to September. Now, these fish are very, very aggressive. They will attack much larger fish. They have very sharp teeth, so they will attack larger fish. But another thing that they like to eat is detritus. There's another good vocabulary word. Detritus is just the sediment and waste, everything on the bottom of the uh, tank here, you can see there's some old uh, grasses, some mud. That's what they're going to be picking around and eating. They will eat uh, larvae of other animals, uh, small, much smaller invertebrates, uh, all sorts of little tiny things like that. But again, they do have very sharp teeth so they can be aggressive and attack the larger fish. When they are babies, and you can't really see it with these because they're very, very greenish right now, they have much more defined black stripes. It almost looks like tiger stripes. As they get older, the females keep a little bit of tiger stripe, but they're turned sort of an olivey color. And then the males get that really nice metallic, and then they will get bright orange on the underside. Ours aren't really bright orange right now, but they do have that metallic on the back of them. So, all very, very cool. All right, 
So we've been talking about this. I'm looking to see if we have any questions. No questions yet. If anybody has any questions, start sending those questions up. Uh, also, post where you're from. I would love to see uh, how far we're reaching here and we can answer your questions. He is enjoying breakfast. That's awesome. I already had my breakfast. I hope everybody out there is taking care of themselves. Remember, take care of one another as well. Check on your neighbors. Keep your social distance, but check on your neighbors and loved ones. Give them a call. Find out if there's anything you need, anything that, that they need that you can help them out with. And then you can exchange if you've got some extras or maybe they have something extra. Uh, we really need to work together to get through this. So we want to keep on doing that and keep all of the rules going. Wash your hands, don't touch your face. All very good. Good. Somebody asks, are these bait fish? That's an excellent question and yes, absolutely. One of the primary uses that people have for these fish is for bait. They are eaten by lots of other large fish, which makes them very good bait. You know, not around here, we don't get the red drum. That's more down south. Um, but the larger fish and sea turtles will eat them. The diamondback terrapins that live in salt marshes will eat them. And our wading birds like egrets and heron will also eat them. So th there are lots of things that like to eat them, but that's what makes them very good bait fish. Any other questions? Are these related to the whoopies from the pet stores? Related to whoopies from the pet store. I'm not sure what a whoopie is. I know that down south, these are very popular aquarium fish. So many of you probably have seen them. If you're from down south, you will have seen these in pet stores. Uh, so they are popular for that. All right. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of questions right now. I want to remind everyone that if you like these programs, Make sure that you follow us on Facebook. You can like us on Facebook. Let your friends and family know. Let your teachers know. Maybe they'll put these videos into part of their online learning and you can take a test or draw a picture of them. I do have a challenge for everybody. It's a little bit difficult today, but I have a challenge. And let's say we're gonna do this over the weekend, although I think it may rain in Connecticut for most of the weekend. I want to challenge you to see if you can find something new that's growing outside. This is the springtime. We're going to see lots of things starting to pop up. So you might find some flowers. You might find some leaves beginning to grow, at least some buds getting larger. See if you can find something that you know is a new growth for right now over this weekend. If you find it, you can go to our website.org. Go to the Virtual Learning Center. You can add pictures. If you see a picture, you could just pay, make a list and let us know what you're finding out there that is brand new growth. Okay? Uh, one of your questions is from a four-year-old who would like to know how do the fish swim? Oh, we have a question from a four-year-old that wants to know how do fish swim? That's actually a really great question. It's also very complicated. So you can see the fish sort of suspend themselves in the water. The way that they're able to do that is they have something called a swim bladder. That's just like a little air sac. So that can create buoyancy, it would make them float to the top or take away the buoyancy. They wanna stay neutral, so they wanna just stay floating. And that way you see how their tail fins, their tail flickers back and forth. That drives them through the water. Their side fins also can help propel them and turn them side to side. So they use their fins to move. They're actually their entire body when they move will wiggle back and forth to get them to go through the water. But that bladder keeps them so that they don't sink all the way to the bottom or float up to the top. They stay floating right in the middle. So I hope that answered your question about how fish are able to swim not very cold right now. We keep the temperature of our tanks about the same temperature as the water. So this tank I believe is set at 58 
which might be slightly warmer than our water in Long Island Sound right now, but probably pretty good for um, the salt marsh where these fish can also be found. So in the high 50s is what we have this tank right now. And all right. So thank you again all for tuning in this afternoon at two o'clock. We're going to do something really special. We're going to do something a little bit different. It is kind of rainy today. So I don't think we're going to be able to take the equipment that we use for filming out into uh, our environment. So what we're going to do is in the building, I'm going to do a story time. We're going to do a Native American story and we're going to see how that works. Hopefully it works really well. So this afternoon, two o'clock, make sure you get a comfy seat, maybe a nice pillow, and you can join me for story time. It looks like we have one more question. Well, we have Heather from Florida, who is a teacher, who wants you to know that she shared our page with the students and that her son loves watching every day. Okay, thank you, Heather from Florida. I'm glad that you're sharing this with your students. I hope many other teachers are as well. And this fish that we just talked about is from Florida. So that's pretty cool that you can see these here in Connecticut and you can see them down in Florida. I bet in Florida they don't have to bury them in Connecticut because they're much colder up here for a longer period of time. Okay, again, tune back in. At 2 o'clock we're going to be doing a Native American story. And if you want to see the videos that you've missed, go to MegsPointNatureCenter.org and our virtual learning center. Thank you all for tuning in.